They're hot. This is good. Mmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it right there. What's up guys, welcome back to Seeds of BNG. Uh, before I get started, let me show y'all. It is pretty gloomy outside. It is cold. They're talking about sleep and stuff like that. So, got some projects still left out there. Some things to get started, definitely before the spring. But today, what I'm gonna be doing is working on rendering some of our pork fat that you see right here. This is all pork fat. Um, we have a ton more in the freezer, but I've never actually rendered it myself, so I've looked at videos, I've um, seen it done. I know the process kind of, you know, when we cook bacon and stuff like that, we usually <coughs> um, filter off and strain off and save some of that grease for seasoning. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this that I've seen where you could do it super low and slow. You know, I'm talking about two to six hours I've seen some people put it in the um, in the crock pot and just let it do its thing to render down that way um, a lot of times that's to make the super snow white um, lard that people use for bacon I'm not so much interested in using it for bacon at least not this batch like I said I have a whole lot of pig fat pork fat in the um, in the freezer outside but this one I'm gonna kind of cook it on medium. I'm okay with it having that tint of brown um, to it, that, that tan tint. Um, there are meat chunks in here. So what I'm gonna do is open these packs up. I'm gonna cut them up into smaller chunks. Um, probably, I don't know. Um, I don't even know what to compare it to. Ah, a fig newton. I will cut it up into fig newton size um, little brick bricks. Put them in this pot here. Um, we love these pots, actually. Um, I think they're called Biltmore. My mom bought these for us. I don't know if it was Christmas or birthday or whatever, but as you see, every time we turn on a video in the kitchen, we usually have them kind of staged on the stove already. Um, we love cooking in them. But this is what I'm gonna render this pork fat in. So without further ado, let me get started. This is the Seeds of BNG. This is our own pork fat from our own pigs that we grew up here on the uh, on the farm. So let me open this up. Let me see if I don't know if y'all are able to see this, but I'm gonna use our kitchen shears here. And I'm just gonna cut them into little bricks like that. Maybe a little bit smaller because this should actually make, um, I don't know if y'all know what cracklings are, pork cracklings. This should make pork cracklings when we're done. That should be the leftover product. So, I don't like these shears now that I'm using them because this is like cutting through goo. So I might come out better if I just, yep, cut them like that, cut, cut, I'm done. I think I should be good to go with um, two or three bags in here. I don't know. Uh, I'll do two bags. I don't know. This is what we're looking like. This is one bag, it's pretty good. Got them into small pieces, like I said. Some of them got a little bit of meat on them. Some of them, it's just all fat, but be good to go. I'm gonna cut this off so my camera don't die on me and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back. All right, I did two bags and this is what two bags was able to, um, to put in the pot here. Those packs look like they're pretty small, but they are not. They, um, I think they were three pounds. Uh, let's see, I might be able to, uh, two pounds. So these packs are two pound packs. So 
I have four pounds of, um, of pork fat in this pot. Um, I'm going to run just a little bit of water in there. Um, let's see, matter of fact, I'm not. I'm going to follow what I've seen done. All right, that's about, I got about four ounces of water, about a half a cup. I'm gonna put that in there. Hopefully that's enough to cover the bottom there. I actually don't think it is. So I may put just a little bit more because you wanna cover the bottom of the, of the pot there. So this is what I have, it's all cut up as you can see. See if I can get that to come in a little bit tighter for y'all. All right. That's what we're looking like. And I'm gonna come over here to the stove, find my big eye, and I'm gonna turn this on medium. Nope, let's see. I got low, a dot, two, a dot, four, a dot. So I'm, I'm gonna put it on about three. What will be equivalent to three. Let me see if I can grab y'all and bring y'all over here. This is what I was trying to say there. I got low, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven would be high. So I'll put it on about three. I'm gonna crack the lid over that just like that. Leave some space for the evaporation to happen. And we're gonna leave it there. And as it starts to do its thing, I forgot what size these um, these mason jars are. Might be, I don't know, a pint, a quart, cup, I don't know. but. I'm going to need more of them, <laughs> just looking at this pot, I'm going to need more than that or I'm going to have to um, go ahead and graduate to the bigger mason jars which we have a bunch of them up here, I think we might even have yeah, more over here, so we have plenty of mason jars and then we need to look at the process of um, just putting the lid on it, the stuff that I have here today might just go into the refrigerator, um, but I plan to use this pork, um, this rendered pork fat for seasoning. It's going to be seasoning. People put it on their greens, seasoning. I love cabbage, um, our collard greens, anything like that. Um, even your meats, when you grease, uh, like greasing your pans and things like that, you could use rendered pork fat. Um, if you got a shoulder or something that you need to wrap back up and put it into the smoker, a lot of people do it with their brisket. They use um, tallow, which is beef fat and um, wrap that same meat back up with that flavoring and, and just let it fin finish that way. Um, your steak, you could use um, pork fat if you're gonna cook in like a cast iron skillet or something like that to go ahead and, um, and sear, your, sear your steaks. But that's what we have right now. I'm gonna try to get in here and finish cleaning up the kitchen. I've cleaned the countertop, washed up the cutting board and all that good stuff. But like I said earlier, the dishwasher's on which means my wife has ran the dishwasher and I don't need to leave dishes in here because I don't want to hear about it later, really. I don't want to hear it. So I'll do my part and leave it the way that I found it and I will keep y'all up to date on what's going on with our rendered pork fat. So hopefully it doesn't end up being a five, six hour process. Oh, I'm gonna turn up the heat, <coughs> but we'll get started. Catch y'all later. What's up people? Just want to bring y'all in real quick. This is what our lard looks like right now. It's probably been cooking for about 20 minutes. I turned it down to one. And this is what it's doing. Once you see that, it's starting to break it down, rendering all that fat down. Pretty much melting it is what, what is happening. And this is your grease pretty much still I think I put a half a cup of um, a little bit over a half a cup of water in here so as you can see this whole pot is now rendering grease we're gonna let that keep going this is what we're looking like you see the time I think it's a little bit over maybe like an hour and hour and hmm, 20 or 30 minutes it's still on one and this is what we're looking at. It's just melding it away, deep frying it, melding it away. 
But as you see, it's a very clean, I don't know if y'all can see that, that pour there. Very clean oil that you're left with. This is your seasoning oil. This is your, okay, I'm gonna saute some real quick. I'm just gonna let that keep on rendering down. It's still on one. We want those bubbles. I don't know if y'all can see those bubbles there on it. But we want those bubbles to disappear. That's moisture that's still in there. Most of that water is gone. And that moisture that you see is still bubbling up there. Um, some of that is coming out of the meat. Coming out of the um, chunks of muscle that was still on, the, um, on that fat there. And the fact that it was frozen. Um, we had just unthawed and stuff. So there is going to be... A little bit of moisture there but we're just gonna let it stay on the stove until it's finished until there's really no bubbles coming from it and we should be in good shape but that's where we are give me your update all right good people it is 3 30 I put these in a little bit before 1 15 and look at that we are ready we don't have all them bubbles no more so I'm gonna, uh, let's see, I'm probably gonna grab this guy and go ahead and take these cracklings out of here. I got a little bowl over here with some, um, with a paper towel in it to help drain off some of this grease once I put it in there. Um, hopefully these go ahead and get nice and crispy. They're crispy really already um, in the oil. But if you hear all this racket behind me here, I got my jars in the air fryer because they needed to be somewhat hot to match the temperature of the oil so that they don't crack them. So I think they're ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and I'm going to ladle these out of here. So let me see if I could uh, let y'all see me doing this. I'm just going to grab them just like that. Nice and crispy there. Fishing them out of there. Now this whole pot, if y'all remember at the beginning, was close to the top. I didn't do the third bag because I thought that it would overflow or something like that. But really, once they render down, it was less than a third of the pot of actual um, solids here. Let me finish getting these out of here. The stove is still on, it's still on low. You want this to stay as warm as possible while you're jarring it. There we go, got them all out. And this is what you get there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me bring you out a little bit. This is pretty much pork cracklings. Everything's been rendered out of there. This is just the remain, remains. This is just what remains there. All right. Now, on to the next step. Like I said, put my jaw here. Letting them get that's hot. All right, on the plan. <laughs> on to help. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Put that down. Got one of those. I'm gonna go ahead and get my lids ready. I think it's these. Or is that too small? Uh, 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 let's see. Okay, perfect. This is what we need. I got three. I think it will make three, but we'll see. So, three lids, three jars, hot, hot. And this is my strainer funnel. And we're going to go ahead and start with this one. So, let's see how we're looking here. 
see if I can move y'all back enough to catch some of this. Hmm. Will it work better? Nope. All right, I'll figure this out, guys. Okay, maybe from this side. Okay, that works a little bit better. And I'll put it out here. It's a nice, uh, I guess, golden color here. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna turn it off. Bring it a little bit closer so I don't make a mess. And just gonna ladle it in there. It's funny, once you start ladling and jarring stuff up, I got three jars here. It might only do two. And it might do four. From what I was saying, it doesn't really matter about um, head space being left on these. The less space, really, the better. Because it will not allow that much oxygen to um, go there. I'm going to bring it all the way up to the neck. On there. Turn that up. Y'all see that there? That's what we got. I'm going to do the rest. Look at that. And these should turn a nice um, white color. If not completely white, it will be a light tannish color, but very, very, very light. I wasn't, I was able to screen out all the little bits and pieces there. I don't see any debris floating around in here. And this is going to be gold considered for your, um, your seasoning of your, your greens, your cabbage, your collard greens, um, to help out with your, anything that you're going to be sauteing in a, um, in a pan, anything like that. This is going to be awesome for that. Oh, and look at this. Oh, drop it. This is what we're left with here. I just grabbed one. This is your crackling. You gotta hear that? Mm hmm I'm gonna put a little hot sauce on them. Not pretty good. It's hot though, and they're still, um, it's a little bit greasy, but they're hot. It's good. Mmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. But a minute, as soon as it closed, as soon as I cut the video off, they're gonna ask for some watch now. But this is what we got. Y'all check it out. <laughs> Looking good, there it is in the sunlight. Well, <laughs> not the sun, I'm sorry. That's what happens when you say stuff like that when you grab a hot jar with your bare hand. That was just uh, some sizzling grease. But y'all look at that. Lovely. And then, I'm gonna tell y'all bye for now. I'm gonna give you, I, I might just take a picture or I may actually turn the camera back on to show y'all what this looks like after it has cooled. So just in case I forget, y'all please like, comment, subscribe. Y'all come back now, you hear? We're rendering lard. All right, real quick guys, look at this. Look at this. It's all chilled and cooled. As you see, I'll try to get it into the light so it don't look too tinted, because it's not. But it's looking good. Let's see if I can. Give them some light here. It is a solid now. And this is what we got. It's not, um, let's see, it's not water bath canned or pressure canned or anything like that. So I'm putting it in the refrigerator. Um, 
I've read and heard some other videos saying that you could put it in um, put it in your pantry. Just make sure that it's not in light or sunlight or anything like that. But I'm going to play it safe and just should be good to go. All right. There we go. Please like, comment, subscribe. Y'all come back now, yeah?